Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, I want to share some hints and tricks for using Nikon's Auto AFI Tune feature. As of this video, this feature is found in the D5, D500, and D7500, but I'm confident that it will become a staple in the mid-range and higher-end Nikon bodies. Note that if you have an older camera, Auto AF Fine Tune is not going to be an option, only standard AF Fine Tune, which we're not discussing this time around. This video is just for Auto AF Fine Tune. Also, this video is going to be the abridged version of what you'll find in my ebook, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System. So, for a lot more information, be sure to check out that book at my site. So, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Why use AF Fine Tune at all? Okay, before we get too deep into the actual how-tos of this video, I want to very briefly talk about why we might want to fine-tune slash calibrate our lenses in the first place. The reason we calibrate is to overcome the tendency of a camera and lens combination to front or back focus. The thing is, your camera was put together at one factory and built to a certain set of specifications, and those specifications have a certain set of tolerances built into them. The lens was assembled at a different plant and has its own set of specifications and tolerances. Of course, prior to your purchase, those two pieces of gear have never met before. In most cases, everything works well and the camera and lens focus properly or, you know, at least close enough for it not to matter. However, other times we may notice that the combination has a tendency for front focus or for back focus. And in those cases, we want to dial in an adjustment that will compensate for that tendency. Now, that's what AF Fine Tune does, and Auto AF Fine Tune does it automatically. Well, sort of. As a side note, if calibration is necessary, this doesn't mean there's something wrong with the lens or the camera. This just means that the tolerances line up in such a way with your particular lens and your particular camera that an adjustment is necessary. You know, that's why this option is available to us in the first place, so don't feel bad if you have to use it. That's what it's there for. Zooms and teleconverters. First, teleconverters. If you have a lens you use with a teleconverter, you need to calibrate the lens and then do a separate calibration for the lens and teleconverter combo. The camera treats the lens plus teleconverter combo as its own lens and will often have a different AF fine tune value than just a straight lens. Now for zooms. One of the deficiencies with Nikon's AF fine tune system is the lack of full support for zoom lenses. Nikon only allows a single value for each lens. However, sometimes if you test a zoom lens, you'll discover that they need a different AF fine tune value for the long end and for the short end. So you have to make some choices and none of them are gonna be perfect. If you find the values are within five points on the long end and the short end, I say just split the difference, call it good. You'll never see that difference in real world shooting. Remember, these are tiny amounts and most of the time, the depth of field that you have will be more than adequate to cover up any minor errors. If you tend to use the lens all the time at like the long end or the short end, you might wanna bias your values towards that end. So for example, if I had a zoom lens that was plus five on the short end and plus 10 on the long end, but I almost always use the long end, I'd probably go with maybe a plus eight or a plus nine. Again, this is messy and it's really not a perfect solution. By the way, if you think the gap is getting too wide between the long and short end, the only option I know of is to send the lens into Nikon and have them take a look at it. Set up. In order to get the most out of the auto AF fine tune feature, you absolutely must have a good setup on both the camera end and on the target end. So let's take a look at that. For the camera, you want it on a sturdy tripod and locked down securely. The better and more secure your tripod and head, the better your results from this process. Next, we need a really good AF target. Most people just use a random item they think is an okay target, but the problem is a poor target is gonna give you poor results and can actually make things worse than when you started. You want the target to be flat and full of information that the AF system can latch onto. A box or container with lots of sharp, clear printing comes to mind, or a nice large barcode can work as well. I've also created a target that you can have for free, and I'll put a link to it in the description area on YouTube and at my site under this blog post. This target is very AF friendly, and I think you'll find it's just what you need. Also, make sure you throw a lot of light at that AF target. A dimly lit target can produce erratic results. Next, let's talk about the distance to the target. 
Lens calibration is usually done between 25 times and 50 times the focal length of the lens, so figure between 4 and 8 feet per 50 millimeter of focal length. An argument can be made for calibrating at your normal working distance for a lens, and if that distance happens to fall into the calibration range I just mentioned, I say, by all means, go for it. However, for longer working distances, this can get trickier. The problem with calibrating at long working distances is that there's a whole lot of depth of field out there to cover up focusing errors. So I generally recommend trying to start by calibrating lens between the recommended 25 and 50 times the focal length the first time and then field test it, see if you like the results. You know what, nine times out of 10, I've been completely happy with this. However, if I run across a case where it's not working, and I have, then I'll calibrate closer to the working distance and try that. Also, if possible, I recommend doing this indoors so you can completely control the environment. If you must do it outside, try to do so on a calm, overcast day. Sunny days can cause heat diffraction between you and the target, setting you up for erratic results. And of course, the wind may cause unwanted camera or target movement. Almost there. Now just make sure your camera is perfectly square to the target. Shooting at an angle can definitely produce erratic and inaccurate results. Also, if your lens happens to have VR, make sure you turn it off. Finally, we'll need to do some camera setup. First, dive into your setup menu and scroll down to AF Fine Tune. Click that and make sure you have it turned on. Next, switch your AF mode to Single Servo AF and your AF area to Single Point. Center up your AF point in the viewfinder, and you can usually do this just by pressing the center of the multi-select button. Finally, press the live view button and center up the AF point. Again, a center press of the multi-selector should recenter the AF area by default. Make sure your live view AF mode is set to AFS as well, and also your AF area mode should be set to either normal or wide. You can set all of this by pressing the focus mode button and turning the command dials while in live view. The procedure. Now, using Live View, carefully focus on the focus target. I recommend zooming in so you can verify that it's as sharp as it can possibly be. This is absolutely critical in order to get consistent results. I find that just autofocusing via Live View usually works really well for a good, well-lit target. Next, press the Focus Mode button and the Movie Record button at the same time. A little dialog screen will pop up asking you if you have everything set and you want to proceed. Very gently, moving the camera as little as possible, press the OK button. You should get a screen that tells you that a new value has been set. If you get an error message, make sure you go back over the setup guidelines I mentioned previously. So that's about it. But you know, well sort of. <laughs> you can see the AF Fine Tune value the camera set by going back to the setup menu and then scrolling to AF Fine Tune and pressing that and then note the value the camera placed in the saved values spot. Now for the trick. Instead of just taking that value and calling it good, we're going to write that value down and do the procedure again. In fact, we're going to do the procedure and write down the values for a total of 12 times. As you do so, you'll very likely notice that the value changes a little as you do, and that's actually expected. The reason the value changes has to do with the way that the phase detection AF system in your camera works. The thing is, phase detection AF isn't perfectly consistent. A slight variance from shot to shot is actually normal. See, most people think that if a given lens needs plus seven points of AF fine tune correction, that once that value is set, you know, that's the end of it. However, the truth is that while plus seven might be right a good deal of the time, for one shot, maybe plus five would have been better, and then for the very next shot, maybe plus nine would have been better. Here's a graph that I generated using Focus Tune software that will help explain this a little better. I set up a target and shot 10 images, one right after the other, refocusing between each shot. The red line represents perfect focus. As you can see, there is a variance from shot to shot. From a practical sense, this is so slight that it really doesn't matter much in the real world. However, it does demonstrate that there are variances in the phase detection AF system. Also, if you've ever wondered why commercial AF tuning products require multiple shots to determine the optimum tuning value, this is why, and now you know. So with that in mind, we have to realize that the idea behind AF Fine Tune isn't to achieve absolute perfection from shot to shot, but rather to find a value that will give us the highest percentage of sharp images. And that's why we take a dozen shots with this technique, so we can average the variances and find a value that will deliver the most consistent results. 
Okay, so you have your 12 values written down. They should be fairly close without any real wild swings, say most of them within five or six AF fine tune points. Swings much wider than that can indicate a technique problem, meaning that things aren't as stable on your end as they should be, maybe the target is poor or improperly focused, that sort of thing. The wilder the swings are, the more suspect your final tuning value is gonna be. Now take the 12 numbers and throw out the highest and lowest number so you only have 10 left. I like to do this in case there were any atypical swings in the set. Don't worry if the high or low number isn't the only one of that value. Next, average the numbers out by adding them all up and dividing by 10. If that number is different than the last number used, click saved value and manually input the number you came up with. So there you have it. This method seems to work really well and the results are generally the same or within a point or two of what I see with commercial products. That said, I find that I still prefer products like LensLine over this method simply because they offer a much more robust set of tools for testing and that gives me a bit more confidence in my final results. If you'd like even more information on this topic, be sure to check out my ebook, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System. There's an entire chapter dedicated to AF Fine Tune, and it dives in much deeper than we have time for here in the video. Of course, the book is also loaded with other tips, tricks, and techniques to help you get the most from your Nikon Autofocus System, so check it out at my site. Also, be sure to stop by my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video or an article. And I'd also love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.